screen. Welcome everybody, my name is Radovan. And my name is Anne. So we are working in the Code Refinery project. And uh, today we'll uh, talk about the code documentation, uh, code refinery lesson, and uh, how we teach it in a code refinery workshop. So how we teach it and why we teach it, or because it is, or I think documentation is really an important lesson. It's an important part of the code development. It's often, often it's an afterthought, uh, but we, we are really convinced that documentation is, is important for the code to be usable and to be used and contributable so that others can contribute to your code. And so that we also understand our own code and scripts in one year or two years. What we so find really is... important, uh, sorry, that we'll, that it's, Close to the source code, right? When we when we write yeah. documentation, that we keep it in the same repository as the code. Yes, you're right, and this is why I mean, don't skip the motivation and the wish list, which is the first episode where we have also an exercise. Where we ask people what uh, kind of documentation they would like, what would be I the ideal documentation, and we show uh, own examples here, which I think are really uh, very nice to show. Yeah, and when we show them, we also um, we have selected these examples because they are not perfect. So there are also some things where one can improve, and we show our own examples, and then we discuss what what are the pros, what are the cons, and also the nice thing is that we don't have to point at other people's projects. So these are our own projects from the past, and we discuss them with the uh, with the participants to collect feedback and to to really collect their thoughts on. Uh, motivation why document and and how to document and here we usually get different inputs from different people so for each uh, okay so here we have this project where for instance we can comment on the, uh, the lack of a readme file or lack of contributing guideline etc so we do it for a few of these projects and uh, some of them are better than others for different kind of documentation. Um, and then in the second episode, we, we uh, provide some tools and solution on how to write the documentation after giving the motivation. Mm -hmm. We also collect with participants a wish list of what, yes. how we would, how would we like the documentation to be. And then we go through the tools, we show that there are many ways to many ways to do that and many solutions. But the thing that really stands out is that for reproducibility, it's important that the documentation sources are in the same repository as the as our code. And then, of course, from there, we can then generate uh, websites or a PDF. And we show different tools that allow that. And then we really discuss, we focus on uh, one, one example, which is uh, Sphinx. Yes, so we have this uh, exercise, which I think is here, you know, uh, mm -hmm. where it's mostly a group exercise where they will experiment on how to write uh, documentation, very neat and professional uh, layout at the end, and it's still quite uh, easy to, to deploy. Um, I think what is really nice too is to put emphasis on the version but uh, for some people, it's not very obvious to have one documentation fair version of the code or fair release. So I think you see it when you start to do this exercise. And we uh, this exercise so we start locally, so we do that on we start on our laptops, and I think it can be quite nice that with relatively few steps, one can get a website or uh, documentation which looks which looks quite professional. And once we have that working on, on the laptop, we experiment a bit, <clears throat> but then we, we go the next step and we, we try to deploy it to read the docs, which is a service that, uh, that can serve the Sphinx documentation. We also make sure we make, we try to make clear that this is not only, this is not language specific. It can be used for any language and, and any project. And in this exercise, then participants uh, put this example repository on GitHub 
and try to deploy documentation through Vitodocs. And also we try to then make a change to it. We commit the change, we get push the change. And I think it's a really nice effect when you see that you get push a modification and then a few seconds, two minutes later, it shows up on Vitodocs and one everything is nicely connected and automated. Yeah, that's uh, quite uh, nice uh, because at the end you can make very professional uh, documentation with very few efforts and you, you know that you can ask other person to contribute mm -hmm. because it's mostly like markdown or uh, restructured text. So it's mm -hmm. still uh, the learning curve is not too high. Uh, so they don't need to learn a new tool for writing documentation only once you deploy the documentation. Yes. Also, what we do normally during workshops is that we use uh, often HackMD to, for no collaborative note taking, yeah. where we already write in Markdown. So we learn it passively. And then when, uh, when the learners arrive here at the documentation lesson, they are often already used to the Markdown syntax. But we yes, that's right. Or explain restructured text uh, and contrast the two. Yeah. Uh, so this means, for instance, this, uh, this episode on hosting website and home pages can be quite short. Mm -hmm. because it's uh, mostly everything we have seen already before with Git Collaborative and uh, uh, writing some markdown, for instance. We only need to explain how to deploy using the GitHub web pages. Yes, and in that episode, we show them how one can set up uh, using GitHub pages or GitLab pages their own homepage or a project web page. Um, a question that we then often get is how, so when should I use GitHub pages? When should I use uh, read the docs? When should I use a readme? And for this, we have this final episode in this lesson where we, so if you go to the next. Yes, so this is the discussion, yes. Where we ex discussed that, well, there is not the one right solution. It's a balance. Sometimes it's okay to have a readme. Um, Maybe you want to then go to Sphinx Vita Docs, but it's not the only. There are alternatives with the same idea. Some projects have both uh, Vita Docs and uh, GitHub pages. So in this final episode, we discuss a bit uh, when when is one tool more suitable or when is the other mo tool more suitable. Yeah, and I think we also say this is not about the tool itself. Yes. It's, uh, also about writing documentation along with the code and the version. Mm -hmm. And then they are, can use um, like different tools for different projects. And maybe uh, uh, to give, so there is always room for improvement. Um, what we could try in future is that we offer maybe more examples that are closer to the R community or for MATLAB developers, C++, although Again, uh, the tools that we show are in principle uh, independent of language, but but each language community has their own ecosystem and their own solution. So we could also offer a bit more uh, balanced view. Yeah, or at the point of example mm -hmm. for different projects. That's a good point. Yes. Okay, uh, looking forward to hearing your ideas about this lesson and looking forward to teaching this together. Thanks. Thanks, Anna.